thing uh, in Aboriginal and she keeps coming back, doesn't she, week in, week out. Anyway, lying just outside the top 40 this week is a group who sing songs of love and life delivered with humour and irony. Before we meet them, let's hear a bit of their single, I Walk the Earth. Here's voice of the beehive, Tracy and Melissa in the chair. All right, oh, we haven't got that for you, so let me introduce the ladies for you straight away. And we'll take a look at the single and video, hopefully, in a few minutes' time. Ladies, welcome to the programme. Thank you. And an early entrance as well. Now, you're both from Hollywood, your sisters. Yes. Half the world are trying to get to Hollywood to make a career. You've come to England from Hollywood to pursue yours. Tracy, tell me why. Uh, there seems to be a little more freedom in the music scene here. And there's also a big independent scene, which is where we started. Whereas there's not that much of an independent scene in America. And the clubs are all closing in L.A., so there was nowhere left to play. Mm. So we just heard about London, go to London, so we ended up coming here. It's paid off. Hopefully it will. And now that you've arrived, what do you make of it, Melissa? I think it's a lot the way I thought it was going to be. I think that um, bands tend to want to go to America because of the money. There's a financial reward there, but that's not really the motivation for our band. Credibility and dignity and creative freedom, I think, are very much a British part of the music scene. So I think that everything we hoped would happen has happened and quicker than I thought it would happen. So yes, cool. you've, done, you've done very well indeed. All right, so far. My parents were horrified when I announced I wanted to be in a pop group some years ago <laughs> and your parents have to cope with two of you being in a group. So what do they make of that, Tracy? Oh, our dad loves it. Our mom, both, both our parents love it. They couldn't be prouder. I think they'd be disappointed if we went into real estate or something like that. <laughs> and they're pretty proud that we're doing something that involves using our brain or creativity or whatever. But you followed in your father's footsteps, haven't you, Melissa, to a large extent. What did he used to do? He was in a band called The Four Preps, and when we were younger, he used to take us out every Friday night and buy us 45. We had a stereo between the two of us, and he's always encouraged us. I remember even I was buying what he considered dodgy singles. I was too young to listen to these records or whatever. And he still bought them. He's always encouraged us. He's never said anything, don't do it, it's wild, it's rock and roll, or whatever people think of it, I don't know. He's always been supportive. He calls in the middle of the night, don't sign anything, are you still writing, and blah, blah, blah. So he's absolutely brilliant. And Mom as well. Great. He was in a group called The Four Preps, yeah. and they immortalized themselves with this line, I reckon. I was a big man yesterday, but boy, you ought to see me now. <laughs> so you're definitely following in his footsteps, no doubt. <laughs> Tell us a bit about the clothes, though, Tracy, because they are quite striking. Well, we make them ourselves. It's most of them, some of them. We go to a lot of thrift stores, a lot of junk shops. Oxfam and things like that. You can get little bits and bobs, stuffs with lace and everything, and old Levi's, and make everything very cheaply. And I think it's a way of expressing yourself. You know. Although, I mean, go ahead, Ray. the clothes are starting to kind of take over the music, which is something we're a little worried about because playing live is, is the main thing for us rather than the wacky fox or whatever. Mm. Oh, we have to say hello to the boys. Do you? They're in Newcastle waiting yes. for us. Hello, boys. The we rest of the you. band, the important three boys, definitely. <laughs> what about the songwriting process itself, Melissa? Because uh, I mentioned in the intro that you like to sort of inject humor and irony yeah. into the songs. Very important, no doubt. Um, Tracy writes most of the lyrics, and she'll bring um, a song in a very small form to the band. And Mike, the guitar player, takes it from there. Woody does his drums with Martin, the bass player and I sort out the vocals and things like that. So it's really much a band process, but Tracy is responsible for a lot of the real potent lyrics. So yeah, I'm tell glad. us about those, because humor and irony, as I say, are yeah. pretty much central to what you write. I'm yeah. glad you mentioned irony, because I've always found ironies in life very fascinating. You can find a lot of them. I, I don't know, I think my songs, like I say, nothing was such a personal song. It felt so weird to hear it on the radio, because it was about a personal thing. And then you're hearing it in a restaurant, and everybody's hearing your personal thoughts. But I think that um, a lot of our songs are up to interpretation. Different people think the songs mean different things, and that's fine. That's what they're for. I know what they mean, and that's people can think of it any way they choose, which is a good thing, I think. And we were talking very quickly about sampling earlier, Melissa. Yeah, is I that know. important to your music, too? It's not important to our music. I think the bands that sample are good at it, and they want to have it. For example, I would be scared being relying on a computer or something or pushing a button. If it didn't work and the song wasn't the same, I would freak out. Some bands do it well, some bands don't. I think if bands do sample other people's things, portions of songs or sounds, I think the problem is that a lot of bands aren't getting credit for their work. But a lot of bands do their own sampling. They make their own sounds mm. and things like that. So there's no place for it in our band, though. No. All righty. Well, let's take a look at your music now, because at last it's ready. If it doesn't cool. come up this time, I'm going to go and have a lie down, quite <laughs> honestly. This is Voice of the Beehive, I Walk the Earth. Okay. 